That was something completely different. In 1977, the Glasgow subway closed its doors for modernisation and said farewell to its first generation of rolling stock, which have been in service on the subway since opening back in 1896. Three years later, in 1980, the Glasgow subway was finally reopened to passengers with its brand new second generation of rolling stock, which currently still operate the subway 42 years on. The 33 power cars were built between 1977 and 1979 by Metro Camel at Washford Heath, Birmingham, and are numbered between 101 to 133. In 1992, Metro Camel built a further eight trailer cars for the Glasgow subway, numbered from 201 to 208. Before the trailer cars were built, these trains were operating as either two car sets or as three car sets with a third power car in the middle. Today, all services are formed of three car sets with a power or trailer car being in the middle. The second generation stock of Metro Camel from 1980 were meant to be replaced by the upcoming third generation of rolling stock from Stadler Rail back in 2020. However, this was delayed due to the COVID pandemic. They are now scheduled to replace the second generation sometime next year in 2023. So now that we've looked at the history of the second generation of rolling stock for the Glasgow subway, let us take a look at the exterior and interior. Brace yourself, there's not much to talk about in this section. The exterior is that of the updated Strathclyde orange livery. Because of the orange livery given to these trains back in 1980, just basically all full on orange, the subway was given the nickname the Clockwork Orange, which is still used by passengers and train enthusiasts to this very day. There are also a few cars and trailers that carry special liveries. On board now, the interior is quite basic, as you would imagine on a rapid transit subway train or on an underground train, with the seatings being fitted to either side of each carriage. Overall, despite only visiting the Glasgow subway for about two hours, I very much enjoyed travelling on the Glasgow subway's Birmingham-built second generation of rolling stock. It will be sad to see them be replaced by the third generation of rolling stock, and I do hope that the Glasgow subway will do a farewell tour with the second generation, and preserve one or two carriages. So that concludes my review of the Glasgow subway's second generation of rolling stock. What do you think of these trains? Let me know in the comments below, and don't forget to like and subscribe while you're at it. Until next time, thanks for watching, and stay safe everyone.